Welcome to This Week in CoreCon, episode number 47, the show where I give you my opinion on some of the biggest stories in the world of CoreCon from the past week. Now, this is my opinion. If you want to learn more about these stories in the show notes down below, I have a link to each story we cover today where you can read about more in depth. First though, hey, thanks everybody who subscribed. We just passed 35,000 subscribers. Wow. Never thought we would hit anywhere near that. Really appreciate everybody's support. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That way you never miss one of our great reviews, how-to guides, Q and A's, or weekly recap shows. But before we get to the news, one last thing. We're giving away some Roku Premieres and Premiere Plus to two lucky winners. First place will get the Premiere Plus, second place will get the Premiere. You have until Monday the 15th to enter the giveaway. So in the show notes down below, check that out. And if you're not watching our shows when they go live on Saturday, this is a good reason to do it. Often we do giveaways or breaking deals where you need to jump on them right away or they expire. We'll have other giveaways, maybe another uh, brand new Roku. We'll see. I don't know, but don't miss out on the Roku Premiere and Premiere Plus. All right, let's dive into the news. AT&T plans to launch a new Netflix-like competitor in the end of 2019. So what's AT&T here doing? Well, it looks like what they're trying to do is take all the back catalog of their um, content they purchased when they merged with Time Warner, which includes HBO content, Warner Media content, and more, and put it into a streaming service. It's not a bad idea, honestly. They have a ton of content from stuff like Babylon 5 to The Sopranos just laying around, not really doing a ton for them right now. And they can always go and take this back catalog stuff, put it into a streaming service, and say, hey, if you want it, here is our, it's called, called Warner Archives. I don't know, at t Archives, whatever you want to call it. And it's all there. Now, this has been tried before by Warner. They had it, but it wasn't a very good service. The selection was very small, price was kind of high, and it didn't do well with the Warner Archive or whatever it was called. Uh, but seeing at t do this does make a lot of sense. They do have a lot of content that is honestly not making the money, really. So instead of just sitting on it, why not put it out there, make it available? Um, they will need to be competitive on pricing. I honestly wouldn't mind seeing this almost as a free service. Hey, our really old stuff, ad supported, free out there for you to watch, I think will be a huge hit. Uh, but look for ATT to probably try to charge for this because they want money quickly and upfront. This all comes from a filing they made at that on October 10th where they announced a direct to consumer, is what they call it, streaming service in the fourth quarter of 2019, which is, quote, another benefit of AT&T Time Warner merger, as we're committed to launch a compelling and um, competitive product that will serve as a complement to our existing business and help us expand our reach by offering a new choice for entertainment with Warner Media Collection. And Warner Media is the new company that includes like Warner Brothers and HBO and all that put into one company. Keep an eye on this. Um, more companies are going to try to do this. The cost of launching a streaming service is extremely low. If you're sitting on rights to content, it really is kind of like, why not do this? Why wouldn't you want to launch that? So keep a close eye on this for more people to do it. But it will probably also mean we're leading into a point where some of these services are not going to make it in 2019. I'll talk about this more in weeks to come. But we are definitely to a point where there are more services than the market can sustain. It's not a knock on core cutting. Just the fact that there's more services than people willing to subscribe to services, somebody's going to have to fail. We'll see if Warner is one of them. I don't know. It's going to be an interesting fight there, but their at t is well-placed to make an aggressive push here. We'll see what they do. All right, next question or a story, I should say, for the day. Apple's new core cutting service will be free for iPhone and Apple TV owners. According to the CBC report, Apple's new um, original content, which they're spending a billion dollars on right now, will come included with iPhones, Apple TVs, and iPads. Probably MacBooks, too. Um, it's going to come through the Apple TV app, which probably shouldn't surprise anybody. That's the app that kind of collates everything in the Apple TV into one spot for most of the content. And that looks like it's going to be what's used to launch the new Apple on-demand streaming service, they have a lot of content being created with like Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoons, and more making original content. It was reported a few weeks ago that the Wall Street Journal 
from the Wall Street Journal, excuse me, that Apple is really trying to make this like PG or G kind of family friendly, that they've really cracked down on a lot of the more gory, violent, sexualized content, that they don't want that. And they're going to let Netflix and others run with that. And they're going to say, hey, we're going to be a family friendly content here. Um, it seems like they want to use this to sell devices. There has been no talk so far we've heard of a paid version. So if you're an Android user, at Windows user, you may be out of luck. The question with this is, will this drive people to go sign, buy an Apple product? Would a Reese Witherspoon show make you want to buy an iPhone or an iPad or an Apple TV? I'd love to hear from you. W what do you think of that? Does this move you to say, oh, well, that's it. I got to get an Apple TV now. Or are you saying, hey, there's so much content out there. Why well, get this? It's family friendly. But Disney, at about the same time, is launching their own family friendly service that will work on non-Apple devices. Um, you know, let me know. What do you think of this move? One of the questions I have is, yeah, so this may be free at first. It's just one of those like, hey, six months free, and then you have to pay X after that. Keep a close eye on it. They're spending a billion dollars. They clearly want their money back. Would they be able to sell enough Apple TVs, iPhones, and more to justify a billion dollars in content sitting on them for free? That's a tough sell there because there's a lot of costs in Apple TV. There's a lot of costs in an iPhone and an iPad. Yeah, when you buy iPhone or iPad, typically you spend more on apps and different things than an Android user. Android users often have more free options to pick from and they typically spend less on in-app purchases. Is Apple writing the numbers saying, hey, if we buy you in, you're gonna spend so much additional money uh, in the iTunes store that it's worth it for us to just give this away. Let me know. I would appreciate your thoughts on that. Is this, is this gonna entice you to move to Apple? Is this an Apple, as an Apple user, are you excited about this? Is this something you think that will help keep you as an Apple user? Leave me a comment. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. The last story of the day. Um, what can save PlayStation View from shutting down? I know a lot of people are like, oh, you just hate PlayStation View. Well, no. This is actually um, a topic that's popped up because there's a lot of pressure on Sony from investors and analysts to shut down PlayStation View. The reality is PlayStation View is lagging behind the other competitors somewhere between 500 and 800,000 subscribers. There's even been reports that over the summer, they lost subscribers. While services like DirecTV Now is reportedly very close to 2 million, Sling TV over 2 million, Hulu over a million, and others, YouTube TV is also suspected to be over PlayStation View. With that situation happening right now, uh, and the fact that PlayStation View is still losing money, that's left a lot to sit there and wonder, hey, is Sony putting their money into a worthwhile effort here? Sony has said, well, we get data. We have data that we collect from PlayStation View that we can use to better tune what TV shows and movies we make. So it's been worth it, but for how long? Uh, so I kind of came up with a few quick and easy things I think Sony can do to better save PlayStation View. I think these are things that if they made these changes, PlayStation View would see a dramatic increase in subscribers and public sentiment. Not, and not a lot of these are new. I've been talking about this since PlayStation View came out. But number one, name change. Change the name. Drop the PlayStation View. Heck, even people within my own office have been like, hey, when I first heard of PlayStation View, I thought I needed a PlayStation. Almost a week doesn't go by where I don't hear... Oh, yeah, PlayStation is great. It's got the channels I want, but I don't own a PlayStation, so I can't use it. It's like, oh, Sony, you're throwing money away. There's money on the table. Look, here, here's a million subscribers you could have tomorrow. Okay, that may be a little high. There are tons of subscribers Sony would get tomorrow morning if they changed PlayStation View's name to View TV, Sony View TV, whatever, Sony TV. View TV, I personally think is my favorite name. I play, you still have all the goodwill from PlayStation View, but people understand now you don't need a PlayStation. Um, I find it funny, and this is point number two, better marketing. I find it funny they're marketing right now. A big part of it is to push the idea that you don't need a PlayStation. Uh, there's one with the ESPN college football cast where they, they go into the tent and one of the reporters is there and she says, oh, I'm watching 
on college football and PlayStation View, and you don't need a PlayStation. A lot of their ads right now are pushing the idea that you don't need a PlayStation. And that's kind of sad because that's money and marketing they could have used to say, hey, here's why we're better than Hulu. Here's why we're better than DirecTV Now. Here's why we're better than Sling. Instead of spending money on saying, this is why you should get us, uh, we're spending money on, you know, hey, by the way, you don't need a PlayStation. You know, we work on Roku. We work on Apple TV. We work on the Fire TV. You know, that just seems like such a waste of money. You could better use that money with um, other services. So keep that in mind out there that there's a lot of better ways to that app, that Sony could be marketing instead of arguing about what is the uh, what they should be using their uh, what devices you could be using on. Excuse me. And lastly, reaching out to non PlayStation gamers. Right now, if you want to tweet at PlayStation View, you have to tweet at, at PlayStation. If you want news about PlayStation View and Twitter, you have to reach out to at PlayStation. They have a PlayStation blog, but most of the big stories about PlayStation come out or view come out on the PlayStation blog, not the PlayStation View blog. If Sony would put effort into a dedicated PlayStation View channel with a dedicated Twitter account, dedicated Twitter support, dedicated Twitter blog or blog for PlayStation View that was actually used more often, I think they would do a better job reaching the general public. So keep that all in mind. I think they are slowly developing and growing their support. They are talking about PlayStation View more, but still mixed in with, hey, the brand new Call of Duty game came out, and then, oh yeah, we're over here, a little bullet, oh, uh, PlayStation View news a little bit here. Oh, brand new game controller or whatever. And it just seems like it gets lost in the mix with all the gaming news. It goes back to why it should be its own entity called View TV, in my opinion. I'd like you to know, though, those are the three things. New name, better marketing, and separating themselves from the gaming. They really need to be a different entity separate from their gaming. What would you do? Do you agree with that list? Do you think they should make those changes? Do you think they're, that they should keep the PlayStation View name? Uh, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know what changes you'd like to see. Hey, that's the show this week. Thanks, everybody. Sorry for the crazy week. I had a little minor surgery. Um, helped my breathing a little bit better, and I can breathe. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, everybody who understands that our live TV schedule kind of got out of whack because of that. But we're, we should be back onto a normal schedule with our live q and a's this week i also ended up with a cold so the videos my voice you may have noticed is a little off once the cold's completely gone i should be back to normal so i really thank you though thank you for your support thank you for your understandings when we have to make some last minute changes and hey 35,000 subscribers wow thank you if you haven't hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up hit that notification bell i really appreciate it so we'll see you next week let me know what you think of these stories. Let me know if there's a story I missed. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Take care, everybody. Have a good weekend.